Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Pete Ranzulli filling in for Scott, Mark, and Evan today uh, out of the office. Uh, Evan's actually um, picking a different place to move today, so uh, we've got a lot going on today. Uh, as far as the market's concerned, um, what can you say other than we're in a very, very stock-specific market right now? What I'm seeing right now is a lot of traders are are getting hurt just by using moving averages right now where there's there, a stock might be above or below it and they're wanting to be long or short in, in sort of a uh, in a way where they might have conviction and it's just not the case right now most of the moving averages are barely pointing up barely pointing down other than a couple of sectors and i think the ags right now are probably one of the stronger ones specifically monsanto which we'll get into in a second but what i want to point out is um we had a fantastic act, active trader summit here in new york last week and i just want to touch on two points that Mark Sperling had made. And the, the conversation, uh, the presentation that he had did was learning to trade cash flow versus swing trade. And I think it's very, very perfect for today's trading relative to expectations for follow through. The first point that he had made was you must know the environment that you live in. In other words, you must know the type of trade that you are good at, the type of trade that you feel comfortable with, the type of trade where you'll never hesitate. And it's more so the condition which in this case, Mark, for, for those of you that know that follow Mark, he is a bullish trader. That's where he lives. That's where he considers his, uh, his niche in the market. He also said something that I think most new traders are not aware of or, or inexperienced traders, however you want to word it, and it absolutely applies to this market that we're in right now, is that most of the year he will get to the numbers that he feels are his trading goals from anywhere from four to six months worth of trading. So in other words, those four to six months out of the entire 12 line up well where he does very well during that window. And then the rest of the time is sort of a cash flow, chopping back and forth type of window. And we're kind of in that right now. If you look from uh, December of 2011 up until March, uh, maybe early April, we had a really nice run to the upside. It was very clear. Everybody was uh, all on the same page about whether you should be long or short. Since then, we've been kind of gapping up, closing strong, opening in the opposite direction, bouncing back. What I'm trying to get across to you is right now, other than some very specific stock specific plays, you do not have the market on your side. Now, I will tell you, I came in today expecting to be long. The monthly chart of the spiders, if, if I can uh, just shoot over to that right now, we'll just go over it real quick. Monthly chart of the spiders last month was strong. Today, we're still what I call well bid. We have made higher highs, higher lows on the spies. On the weekly charts, last week we pushed very well off the lows, and now we're hovering near the highs of last week. And then if we go to the daily, uh, most of our major moving averages are what you might term in the right order, meaning the 8's above the 21, the 21 maybe are flat just above the 50, but they're all definitely above the 200. You can see clearly here we're making higher lows along the way. I had a little bit of a bias today where I was expecting, although we had light volume on Friday, I was expecting a little bit of follow through today. I came into today saying whether it's a breakout to the long side or even a lower opening, I'm expecting to only be looking for spots to get long today. Well, we opened, Citigroup announced better than expected, but lower than a year ago. So immediately we had some selling. If I just pull up Citigroup here, you can see a big red candle. We opened up higher, pushed back down. Now you have to know. Am I a news trader or am I somebody who ends up trading off of just the intraday technicals? Neither one is right or wrong. But again, going back to what Mark said, you must know where you live. What is your particular sweet spot? What's your niche? Whatever you want to call it. Technically speaking, still a downtrend here. We're below. All the moving averages are pointing in the same direction. If we can go to JP Morgan real quick. JP Morgan, clearly the levels are very easy to see here. This, this uh, black line that I have here is the 50 EMA on the daily. Now, if I'm working with you, or if I'm, I'm, I'm walking you through some ideas, it's very clear. Until JP Morgan can get through that 50 EMA to the upside, regardless of all the news, all the noise, or there was actually something else that just came out today about a lawsuit, stick to the levels and let a stock prove it can get itself through that level. And I want to give you something, uh, GLD. Very popular to talk about this stock, and, and, and I'm getting email after email about where do you think the stock's going, where do you think it's going? Look, the bottom line is it's in the middle of a four-month trading range. It's not going anywhere. It hasn't gone anywhere. This advice I want to give you is let the market or the stock tip its hand. If it does what you expect it to do, then you can hop on board. You don't have to get the first piece to the last piece. If it's not obvious, when I go, I'll go back to the spiders again real quick. 
If it's not obvious, and take a look at the spiders here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the last nine days in the spiders are what we'd term doji type candles or what, you know, whatever name you want to give it. But the bottom line is it's indecision, opening and closing at roughly in the same spot. And when we do get follow through, such as what we had on Friday, again, we didn't follow through. We had a nice day on Friday. Put whatever you want to, whatever kind of emphasis you want to put on, light volume, strong volume, it doesn't matter. We didn't follow through again. We should have technically, but we didn't. So what I'm getting across here is exactly what Mark said in, in our uh, seminar on Saturday. Right now, we are in cash flow type trades unless you have a sector or a stock that is obvious. So let's get to the ags right now. Monsanto right now, by far, doing what it's supposed to do technically. It's pushing higher, consolidating, holding some good solid levels, pushing higher again, holding the levels again. All right, that's what you want to see. Now, one thing that you need to know as a trader, you must know what you expect to see because if you do or don't see it, you should know what to do. And this is where hesitation comes from, but more importantly, getting to today's market. This is where over trading comes from. If you don't have in your mind what you expect to see and what that price action needs to look like for you to get involved and more importantly how heavy or light you should get involved how you should manage the trade getting out into momentum as opposed to looking to book a profit into momentum you're going to get chopped up or even worse you're going to give back profits because you're only in a cash flow type of environment and i'll be honest i've been a little guilty of that myself lately i've had some early morning profits where my game plan has followed through and i'm looking for follow through maybe not reading the market as well as I should or wanting to see more than is there. And I'm adding to positions where I should probably in this tape be looking to take cash flow trades unless it's something like this where you're getting follow through in Monsanto. All right, so you have some really obvious technical levels. I will tell you this, the technical levels that are working very well right now, pre-market high and low, yesterday's high and low and today's opening price. If the stocks you're trading, and I'll go to a couple that are inside ranges that are good examples of not getting too crazy. UNH, inside day followed by an inside day. Now, as a trader, you need to know volatility leads to contraction, contraction leads to volatility. That's two days of boring, but that should be setting up a nice range breakout. One inside day is usually enough. This is two. So we're looking for some follow through to the downside. The market bounced, the stock couldn't get out of the previous day on Friday, and now today we had another intraday consolidation. You can clearly see here on the daily after the news from last week, uh, maybe about 10 days ago, pushed down, we've held, we stayed in that level, and now we're getting even more contraction. I'm looking for the stock to follow through to the downside tomorrow. Now we do have some support there, 54, 54, 50, and the 200 just below that. I'm looking for a push through to the downside, but here's the point that I wanna make. When you're doing your own game planning, when you're doing your nightly work, you need to know the levels, you need to know the direction before you start to look for intraday patterns or multi-day patterns. First comes your strategy. You must know whether or not you want to be a buyer. A lot of traders in this market are getting hit because they're finding intraday patterns without a higher time frame bias and they're getting chopped up bad. I'm getting email after email about, I don't know what's going on, maybe it's me, they're second guessing what they're doing. Find specific stocks, and again, we just went through a bunch of them. I will tell you right now, we have Golden coming out uh, tomorrow morning, I believe it is. We do have some pockets, though. We we'll take a look at COF. All right, we broke out of this level. This is actually a very good example. Clearly, this level here, just over 55 is a level. We pushed up, went through it, and came back in. That's not what you want to see. You want to see it push through that level and stay there. So for confirmation on ideas that are taking out levels in this taper in right now, you want to see it push through there and stay there. Now, staying there could be relative to somebody. It could be a close on an intraday chart. It could be a close on a daily chart. But in this tape, get a little bit more room. All right, Target was a strong one today, did not follow through. Target finally pushed through. We had what we call capitulatory volume on Friday where it did close to 10 million shares, if not just over 10 million, and today we did a lot less. So it looks like that push up from 57 to 62, gonna see a little bit of a pause here, which is healthy action. But this is what I'm talking about here. You can see clearly we've pushed through this level. Within one day in June, we did not stay above there. We danced around a little bit got back above that level and we had two closes and you got paid on Friday if you were doing that. If you were paying attention to letting a stock stay through a level first. A couple of more that we're looking at, CVX. Again, I'm setting up some stock specific ideas that are strong and all the moving averages that we look at are on the page where they're supposed to be. Now one sector that is very broken right now that is not setting up as a long are the casinos. We have Win. 
Big support here just above 95. LVS looks even messier. LVS pushed down today as well. So you need to know most of the market is not on the same page. And I just showed you seven out of nine days in the spiders are doji type candles. Dojis mean indecision. If you want to understand when to size up, when to hold longer, when to have more share size, what I call trade expectation, you need to know when that trade expectation goes up or down. Right now, it's not up. You must manage your game plan and your expectations based on what the market's making available, not just what you would like to earn. In the beginning of my career, I got slapped around silly because I didn't understand trade expectation. Put something as simple as one line on your game plan in the morning. Is the market obvious? If you can't answer that question like that, that automatically means your trade expectation is going to go down a little bit and you're probably in a little more of a cash flow type trade. So print out the charts of what we have over the last couple of weeks. Find some individual sectors. Like I said, um, COF strong today. WFC was strong today. Amgen's another one. There are some individual stocks you could take advantage of. Don't get them after they've rallied for three or four days. Let them consolidate, pause, pull back a little bit, and then get in there and hop on the ride. But again, until the market and Bernanke a couple of days from now resolves itself, could be summer trading, could be everybody waiting for Bernanke. We don't know yet. All I can tell you right now is holding and adding on to positions is not working. We'd all like to see those big numbers, but you know what? Let's take what's available. Let's trade for some cash flow. If and when the market finally breaks out of this frustrating, challenging environment that it's in right now, we'll be in the VTF to help push you to make sure you understand now we broke out, now we're ready to go, or maybe even broke down, we'll see. But do what's right right now, which means expectations are a little lower because the big picture isn't there. Book into momentum is what seems to be working right now. When we finally push out, pause, and stay out of this range, we'll be on top of it with you and we'll help make sure that your expectation is in sync with what the market's doing. Have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow. Hello, everybody. My name is Pete Renzulli, Chief Marketing Officer of T3Live.com and one of the traders in the active mentor room for T3 Trading Group. What I'd like to do today is I'm really, really excited about introducing you to and inviting you to the first T3 Live Active Trader Summit in New York City, which is on Saturday, July 4th.